Hey guys, welcome to Real Team Talk. And with me, I have Albert Teal. Albert, you have been in a lot of videos with me. A lot, probably about four or five. You probably think I'm stalking you uh, by this time. <laughs> no, I'm not really. Yeah. <laughs> Real Tank Talk is where we get to sit down. You're in my home right now in front of my tank. And we get to talk candidly about a current topic. So I really appreciate you being a part of the first episode. Uh, the reason why I started this show is because we did a live show together. Yes. I had a live show series called yeah. Saturday Night Aquarium Live. Yeah. And um, I, I, it was a good series, but being the filmmaker in me, uh, not that the topics bored me, but being that disconnect, being online, you sitting at your house, yeah. me sitting at my house. So today, we're going to talk about uh, ozone reactors, which is not touched that much in video um, in the aquarium hobby, but you, you did write uh, about it in one of your books, um, and you have a lot of books that you've written. A, a, so a books, and your newest one we talked about last year, which was Nano Reef Aquarium. The Nano Reef Aquarium. Why don't you tell just a little bit about yourself, just so they can um, get to know you a little bit better. I, I started in the hobby uh, 30, 35 years ago, and like everybody else, I started in freshwater, and then of course moved to salt water. Uh -huh. I started in Belgium yep. originally, came to the United States 1980, January, decided based on all my travels in Europe for the companies that I was working mm -hmm. for, that the hobby uh, here in the United States was so far behind what was being done mm -hmm. uh, in European countries, in Asia. I made an agreement with what I thought was the top of the line company, uh, and it was a German company called Dupla, mm -hmm. and I became the uh, importer for all of their products. I continued to be uh, interested, obviously, in the hobby because mm -hmm. I had done, you know, so much and introduced what was being done in Europe and Asia to the American market. So the American market started gradually uh, adapting to what was being done uh, over there. Uh, interestingly enough, at Magna, mm -hmm. uh, Mike Paletta, who sort of gave a uh, talk about the history yeah. uh, of reef mm -hmm. keeping. I watched that video. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, he did mention, you know, Albert Thiel, uh, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And 30 you know, plus years ago, when you first uh, got to the US, what was it like to have a reef aquarium? What, were, what, what did a reef aquarium look like? Basically, very little was available in mm -hmm. the US. You could get uh, panther groupers, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, you could get blue damsels. Mm -hmm. So blue damsels, they've been around yeah, for, yeah. Different, yeah, okay. Uh, in fact, that was what, you know, Shops used to tell you if you want to cycle your aquarium, yeah, put a course. bunch of dams, you know, you know, know. yeah, yeah. People uh, <clears throat> but you couldn't get very much, and and anything you could get was very hard to keep because we didn't know all that much, mm -hmm. you know. It was uh, under gravel filters, reverse mm -hmm. under gravel filters, and that's what most people did. And when I started introducing. Uh, the products that came from Germany, uh -huh. uh, the first was the trickle filter uh -huh. with the bio balls, you know, uh, that was like a revelation for most people. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it was not an inexpensive proposition to go that way. What corals were being kept in the aquariums back in the 80s? Back in the 80s, uh, you know, uh, although it's not really a coral, yeah. anemones is what turned up first. First, okay. And then, little by little, uh, some corals became available. Not uh, Acropora, not Montipora, uh, not Cephastrea, non Chalices, mm -hmm. you know, none of that. Uh, you got very simple corals, but one uh, that you could find was basically all the affiliate okay. uh, type corals. Somebody, uh, I think it was Quality Marine, but mm -hmm. don't quote me on that. Okay. Uh, you know, the biggest importer of, mm -hmm. of, you know, fish and corals in this country started importing, you know, affiliate, and so we had that. Uh, in, in addition to that, 
uh, we got, you know, elegant coral, mm -hmm. but it was elegant coral of a, how can I say that, a very low quality. Mm -hmm. And so it didn't survive for very long. Yeah, and I remember you we know. talked about that. Uh, yeah, video yeah, yeah, right yeah. Here. But as more and more hobbyists got into, you know, hey, you know, maybe we can keep corals in addition to our fish only aquariums. Um, which came as a second stage after the, you know, the dead coral, mm -hmm. remember, yeah. where we had to bleach our coral, we had to have two sets of corals, yeah. so that we could take the, the one uh, that had uh, algae the, the, out, yeah. put the bleached yeah. one back in, yeah. but then came the live rock. Yeah. Once the live rock started appearing, that's about the same time, about 82, 83, when we saw suddenly the appearance on the market of some corals, but pricey, you know, uh, because the, the supply was limited, the, de the demand wasn't all that great, mm -hmm. and those, uh, you know, like you and me who were really into it, you know, didn't really care about the price at that time, to well, be let honest. Me ask you, I know it was a long time ago, um, and I know inflation is different, but do you remember around what, how much a coral would probably cost you back then? Um, let me uh, let me try to think back. Uh, the 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 anemones you could get were probably around seventy, eighty dollars. Okay, and that was a lot then. In yeah. those days, yeah. you know, because you're going back forty yeah. years, you know. Um, the any any of the elegance or the other corals that were available mm -hmm. were a hundred plus. And, and you got very little pieces. So it was an expensive yeah, that, that is, you know, yeah. proposition, especially since you really didn't know how long that coral was going to survive. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as things go, you know, in, in any hobby, uh, people invest time, research, mm -hmm. and, and figure out a way uh, to do things better. Wherever I went, I used to buy books. You, you know, know, books mm -hmm. and more books and more books. Uh -huh. I have a collection of books I could open a library, <laughs> you know. Uh, and uh, I found a couple of books uh, of names that, uh, you know, may be familiar to you, uh, that are probably familiar to some advanced mm -hmm. hobbyists, but that newer hobbyists have never heard about, like, uh, Guido Hoekstedt, Peter Wilkins, mm -hmm. you know, and those guys, uh, who wrote sort of the basics of, you know, how you should keep an aquarium. And interestingly enough, today's topic yeah. and the skimmers were covered in Peter Wilkins' books. Oh, okay. You know, they were not... Back in the 80s. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, uh, Hoekstedt, uh, Guido Hoekstedt, wrote about skimmers in 1968, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And it's the same basically uh, in those days, you know, we, we had a number of implements and we had a number of uh, devices that we could use and, um, you know, as the devices were improved or got improved, we managed to keep our corals for longer. And one of the, um, I can't say inventions, but yeah. one of the big contributions uh, to the hobby in those days was the use of ozone. Okay, you and know? now I'm glad you mentioned we, that. We so let's go to my first question, sure. which is, what is an ozone reactor? What is ozone in your tank? What, what is it? Right, well, o ozone is just a very active form uh, of oxygen, mm -hmm. right? Uh, instead of O2, it's basically O3, right? And uh, it, it is a very powerful oxidizer. And so why did we use ozone? We used ozone to purify the water. Mm -hmm. Like so many other compounds that we use to purify the water, ozone allowed us to raise the level of purity of the water because ozone would neutralize and break down whatever pollution, especially organic material, mm -hmm. right? 
was in the aquarium. If you use ozone, uh, the yellowing that so many tanks, you know, went mm -hmm. through, or Gelbstoff, yeah. as the Germans called it, you know, was never an issue because uh, the ozone would basically burn that out, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, of course, using ozone in the beginning uh, was a bit of a give and take, and we had to figure out how to use it correctly. Mm -hmm. And so we had to go back to the Peter Wilkins and Guido Hookstedt yeah. days where they described how they were using ozone. And basically, it was either injected in a reactor, yeah. you know, or uh, better yet, uh, it was injected in the skimmer, okay, right? And that's how mine is. So I'm using the Aquamatic Ozone 200. I'm glad right. you mentioned on how to use it because right. I, I had no idea. I had never used one before. And when I started my tank, they told me one, basically to, to set the level to almost zero when you started out. Why is that? Why did I have to start it so low right. in the beginning? In the be because the water quality is, is of a certain level, mm -hmm. right? certain parameters. Now, <clears throat> when you suddenly introduce this very active oxidizer, you don't want to make an immediate change in the water quality because none of the fish and the corals that are in your mm -hmm. uh, aquarium are used to that sudden and drastic change. Okay. Just like they can take uh, rapid pH changes mm -hmm. or rapid temperature changes or rapid calcium changes, or whatever that happens, they cannot take the same change in the water quality uh, parameters uh, if you use too much ozone right from the start. Now, we'll so you, you go ozone. really, really yeah. slowly mm -hmm. and tweak it up a little and watch what goes on. Mm -hmm. And based on what you see happening in your aquarium, yeah. You either tweak it back or you tweak it up if everything seems to be going all right. Of course... Um, well, before you left that subject, I wanted to ask you, will ozone, um, using it in the early stages, like say if you use it at a high level, would it deplete the good bacteria or the beneficial bacteria yeah. that you're trying to grow? Yeah, you yeah, say? yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, it would kill off anything that, that it can oxidize. Okay. You know, because ozone is such a reactive and mm -hmm. active form uh, of oxygen and so it would kill anything in the tank mm. including your fish including your okay. coral. So you have to be really right. careful when you use an ozone. The way you use ozone you always have to make sure that no ozone gets in the aquarium water. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. And there are tests that you could use but usually what I used to tell people in the early days this, no. this is the test, you know? No. Okay. If you put your nose over the aquarium mm -hmm. and you smell ozone, or if you go into the room or the cabinet where your skimmer is that you blow ozone into, if you can smell ozone, you're probably putting too much. Okay. Actually, not probably, you're definitely putting too much. So, a balance had to be found. Mm -hmm. How do you make sure that you don't put too much oxo uh, ozone mm -hmm. in one go uh, on a continuous basis in your aquarium. And that's when suddenly um, the ORP or, you know, <coughs> the, 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 uh, like, like we call a redox potential mm -hmm. controllers came about because as the quality of the water improved, mm -hmm. the redox potential of the water would go up. And that's measured in millivolts, mm -hmm. right? And so you could use a controller in conjunction with your ozonizer, right? And you set the controller so that the ozonizer works, right, up to a certain level. When that redox potential is reached, mm -hmm. right, the, o the device shuts the ozonizer off. Then if the water quality goes down a little bit and the redox potential goes down, right, as a result, mm -hmm. oops, the redox controller senses that the redox is lower or the ORP is lower, 
So it kicks your ozonizer back in. So it's an on and off uh, situation. So the safest way to use uh, ozone is with a redox potential controller. Um, if, if you're increasing your redox potential too high, mm -hmm. you will notice it by looking at your corals. Yeah. And so how are you going to notice it? And, and you know, I always say that to people, right? The only way you're going to be able to tell whether there is a difference between what you see today uh -huh. and what was last week is to have photographic records because then you can compare. And so if you look at your tank and you say, oh, you know, I, is something wrong, you know? Uh, as you get more experienced, you can tell. You yeah. just look at so the tank. This is a perfect yeah. time to say, you know, follow me on Instagram, yeah. Thomas Vision Reef, and create your own account and take that's, pictures that's, of your corals and that's look at pictures of mine. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> that, that would be the ideal thing to do. Uh, or, you know, go to a forum like uh -huh. Nano Reef. Uh, uh, well, and let's know? talk about that because I think we're pretty much wrapped up talking yeah. about ozone. Yeah, uh, you yeah. answered a lot of questions. Really appreciate it. And uh, one thing before we go into your forum, I wanted to say, uh, so now if you guys want to stay, because Albert, he has so much great knowledge. Um, if you want to stay in tune, you, he has a Facebook forum called Nano Reefs, and I'll put the link in the description. He also has uh, a forum, um, which is, uh, do you, the, what's the URL for that one? The, on the uh, yeah, Nano Reef? Yeah, Nano Reef's uh, forum. If you go to nanoreef.com. Right? nanoreef.com okay right the nano-reef.com okay then you just look under uh, the general discussion for ask albert teal okay great right? and you can they can just ask and you questions right now it's like 600 and some pages you know yep. long so there's a lot of stuff so i don't recommend you go through every single page because it'll take you forever but if you have a question you know just post a question there and it may have been answered before, but well, that's, that's, and that's what I was going to say because I've looked on the forum a lot of yeah. times, and the, you do have a search option right. there too, right? Right. If they want to search for right. uh, yeah. previous topics. If, if people understand how to use the search mm -hmm. and all that, they can look for it. But I have no problem with getting the same question again, mm -hmm. you know, and answering, you know, the question again. Uh, because so many new people come into the hobby, hobby every day. and they yeah. don't want to go through everything that proceeds. Mm. You know, so they just, hey, you know, uh, the strangest question I had the other day, and you're going to get a kick out of this, uh, is um, does the light over the aquarium mm -hmm. have to be on when you feed your fish so they, they can, can see, see the food? food. Okay. Right? <laughs> uh -huh. Right? And so I had to be very diplomatic in yeah. how I answered them, right? Uh, which reminds me of when I but, was... But to a new hobbyist, yeah, that seems... It's not like, a stupid yeah, yeah, question. Yeah. Yeah. When, when I was in... in uh, I remember when we were in Connecticut, mm -hmm. and I gave a talk at the uh, Norwalk Aquarium Society, and that's when the, uh, the metal halides first came out, mm -hmm. right? I had a question there. My wife was there, too. And I mean, she got a kick out of that one. Uh, you know, a hobbyist asked a very sensible and, and appropriate question, you know. Isn't the strength of the light of the HQIs going to damage the eyes of the fish? Oh, uh -huh. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I can tell you, I, I had to, normally I'm not out of words, you mm -hmm. know. I can answer questions real quickly, but there, I had to take a little back and, and sort of think for a second, you know, have I got to ask for yeah. that, you know? Okay, well, I would thank you so thank much you. My for coming on the show. Anytime. Um, uh, stay tuned, guys, for another episode where I talk with another public figure from the hobby. Who knows uh, where, where this series will go, but I'm really excited about it. And guys, until next time, this is The Ultimate Hobby. Thanks a lot. Thanks again. Thank you. I really appreciate Pleasure. it. Next time on Real Tank Talk, we travel all the way to Miami to talk with Roger of Roger's Refood about the truth about frozen fish food.